Welcome back, everyone. My name is Catherine Grace Katz, and I'm delighted to be co-presenter here, along with Catherine Carter, at the 38th International Churchill Conference. I hope you enjoyed these winning videos as much as I did. We are so lucky to have Zach and his mother, Annabelle, with us today, and so I'd like to ask Zach to please come up and join me here on stage. Zach, do you want to just come right here? <laughs> Zach, can you tell us how much money you've already raised for Great Ormond Street? Over 10,000 pounds. Thank you so much, Zach. We're so glad that you're here today, and thank you so much for joining us. For our next session, we're staying with Churchill as a soldier in the 19th century. But we'll continue to gallop through history, and in this instance, rather literally. As many of you know, South Africa was not Churchill's first military adventure, or the first time he risked death in pursuit of honor and distinction. A year earlier, in 1898, young Winston rode with the 21st Lancers in a cavalry charge in the Battle of Omdurman, while accompanying General Kitchener's campaign to defeat the modest army, threatening uh, Egypt, and avenge the death of General Gordon. Here to tell us what it would have been like is Bruff Scott, former jockey turned horse racing journalist and TV presenter and author of the definitive book on Churchill's lifelong equestrianism, The Excellent Churchill at the Gallop. Welcome, Bruff. Well, it's very, very nice for me. I'm rather humbled to be here with all of you, uh, Churchill aficionados and great professors. But I come with a very specific brief that I wrote my book. I wrote it from the saddle, because I was a professional jump jockey. I rode it in all the big meetings and the Grand National. But amongst all the things about Churchill, as you all know, people forget quite how important riding and horses were to him. Of course, he was born nine years before there was a car on the road. And what he did at Omdurman, uh, as I say, I rode a fair bit, was off the scale. And I want to just take you through uh, what would have been involved. He was, have you got the pictures? There we are. Well, that's your normal view of what Omdurman was, or rather sort of dashing, and there was a film which is see Simon Ward. And that is indeed the sword. I have the sword here. Uh, and that's what they were galloping at. But physically, Churchill then was 23 years old. And there were 400 people in the 21st Lancers. And I can tell you, they were absolutely mad for a charge. Because the 21st Lancers, at that stage, they'd never actually been in the battle. And uh, people take the piss out of them and said that their motto should be, thou shalt not kill. <laughs> and there were some very, very good riders in there. Two, particularly two, two people who won the VC, Paul Kenner and Rennie de Montmorency. And they were itching for battle. There were 400 of them in 25 troops, sorry, in 16 troops of 25. And what you have to get is, and what they're doing basically is clearing up. There were 60,000 of these dervishes out there who had been already repulsed in one really sort of medieval swarm coming towards uh, 19th century guns. It was a massacre. But they were fanatical, and there were thousands of them. And there were still people around, and they were trying to clear up. The 21st Lancers are out to clear. There's 400 of them, and they, were, they ride along with a sword up. It's important to get physically what you're doing. You're riding along sword up. Now, that's not that difficult. You can ride. Uh, and they suddenly get some bullets were coming towards them. And they could see what looked like about 400 people on the sort of crest of a bit of a hill, about a quarter of a mile, 500 yards away. Uh, and so they immediately went into what they call line of troops, which they switch and they go one after the other across because the bullets were coming from out there. You can't see much. It's already 8.30 in the morning getting warm. And they go along a line of troops like this. And the deal is, if you wheel right, then you're going to charge. So they're all itching to charge. And some people said they should never have bothered to do it. But they did. They turned to charge. And off they went. The bullets are coming at them. And you, you're going, and you're meant to trot, canter, gallop. I mean, they turned, and they, they were off. So they're on a quite small little Arab, Arab ponies, really, about 14 to 15 hands. And they're galloping. And they're, they're very, very revved up. And 
off they set. Now, that's, again, as a rider, I mean, blood's up, not quite exciting. But there's a big trick for Churchill. When he originally went to India in 1896, as he got out of the boat, came into Bombay Harbour, uh, as he came in, he jumped, there's a little, little dinghy coming in off the main boat, Britannia. He put his arm up to, to catch the, the ring. As he put his arm up, you know what a dinghy like, it bobbed down and he wrenched his shoulder out. And his shoulder was always bad for the rest of his life. But he got special dispensation that when the charge was on, he would fight with a revolver. Now, this is fake, but this isn't, OK? <laughs> he would fight with a revolver. Now, this is where it gets off the scale. You're, you're already blood up. Everyone's screaming, yelling, and the, the final shot, you're going. And don't forget, 22 of them are going to get killed. 100 of them are going to get wounded. I mean, this is, this is going to be very, very rough. And if you fall off amongst these guys, they're going to chop you to bits. I mean, we're, we're talking about 1898, uh, and it's absolutely not Queensberry rules. So he's got to get this back, you can't see that, back into here. And he's then got to, he's then got to get, he's put that in there, he's then got to pull his pistol out of here, cock it, won't you, and you're still galloping along very, very fast, and then fire. Now, I've tried doing that at the walk, it's quite difficult. I wouldn't want to contemplate doing it at the gallop, but just to be practising it. And he did. And it's very important now to get a grip of what Churchill was at that stage. Because we all have the view of him as a great florid statesman with a great voice. and You always imagine he's a great big man. When he went to Sandhurst at 19, he was five foot six and a half. He's smaller than me. And I'm not the biggest chap, but I've got a 36-inch chest. He had a 32-inch chest. He's about eight and a half, nine stone. And he, he collapsed on the parade ground, and he wrote to his mother saying, I'm, I am so, I'm cursed with such a feeble physique, I can, scarce, I can scarce bear the ordinary burdens of the day. So he was determined to make himself fit to ride. He was a fit little chap, but he'd won the public school's fencing championship. He was determined to get fit to ride, and he got himself very fit. He came in, you know, I've got this in the, okay, remember, this is, it, this is back in its scabbard now. So he, it's fallen. He's charging, and as they get within, he said, half the length of a polo field, well, the polo field is 300 yards, so 150 yards out, he suddenly realised this is an old trick, apparently, the Mardi used to do, because this is sort of medieval, is that while there appeared to be 400 people, they were actually on the edge of a dried-up riverbed. So as you got close, you suddenly see the river, there's a big, wide riverbed below, sort of down below here. And across there, there's 2,000 others of these gentlemen. Uh, 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 and they're not particularly keen on the 21st Lancers, whether they've been in a charge before or not. And as he comes towards them, he's riding there and he's got... He's a, he's, a, he's a troop leader. So he's in front. He's got 25 people behind him. Uh, and as he goes in, there's, there's rows of riflemen, pretty old-fashioned rifles, firing at him. He aims himself between the two here. His horse goes straight through that. They fire and miss him. They kill the guy behind him. As you go through, there then is a drop into the riverbed. Now, he drops down into the riverbed, and he writes beautifully about it, being Churchill. It's, as a journalist, it's really irritating, because um, <laughs> he's such a good writer. I mean, I, I've written for deadlines and things, but he writes about this the next day, and then he redoes it in, in my early life. It's absolutely amazing, as a question being writing. And he, the horse jumps down, he, said, he, jumps, he dropped like a cat amongst them. He then got an, out through the other side, and then there's people around, and... He suddenly sees a guy on the, on the ground, and he thinks, oh, he's sort of trying to surrender. And then he realises that what the guy's going to do, which apparently is what they've always done over the centuries, is when they're attacked by horsemen, they throw themselves on the ground, and they've got these great scimitars, and they lie and they slash around the back of the horse's hind legs. 
And if you know what a horse's hind leg looks like, it's got a long tendon. You cut that through, and then you've basically blown the tart. And he, he realised that, moved his horse away, fired and killed the guy on the ground. As he then came round, and remember, there was a horse with him all the time. Uh, another guy suddenly is there, uh, and he shoots him. He goes, he moves a bit further. And all this is happening as fast, almost faster than I'm talking. And he goes more, and then suddenly another guy comes, and he's throwing a spear at it, and he shoots him, and he kills him so that he actually lands here on him. So there's certainly three people he killed in that moment. He's 23 years old, this guy. And I'd like to just look, can we look at this picture of him, what, the sort of person we're talking about here? He's that chap. He's not the florid statesman. He's lean and he's hard. And, and he's determined to win medals. He want, he's, he's, as you all probably know, he was absolutely self-aware. He wanted to make himself famous militarily, uh, and make money, which he did. When he, went down to the, when he went down to the Boer War, he was the highest paid journalist anywhere already. He was, he was on 20 grand a month. I mean, this is ludicrous. Uh, but he's 23 years old, and he's determined to, to win medals, be famous, and then go into politics. That's his plan, and didn't he deliver? Anyway, he's through here. He's killed four people and gets out the other side, and then, then writes it up. But I think... What you need to know is that's a huge physical thing, but the riding had been there from the very beginning. Uh, you, know, you know all about the other influences in his life, but I mean, the very first letter, that very first letter to his mother was talking about riding Rob Roy in the park at Blenheim. When he went to his prep school, when he was 10, he wrote to his mother saying, I do you want to go on with the riding? I enjoy it more than anything. When he went to Sandhurst, the little thin guy, he, he was not hugely successful going in, and he did, he did much better than he'd started with, but his outstanding achievement at Sandhurst, at the end, was there were 120, everybody had to go in for the riding exam. The 127 people went to the riding exam, and he just missed being first. He, just, he was second out of 127. And at that moment, that had been the highest achievement of his life. You know, I'm submitting that if you do this in your early life, you're going to, it's going to be in your head. Not only, you know, he then, as you know, he went to, he went to, uh, to India. Within three weeks of being there, he, was, he got himself into the, into the regimental polo team. Polo was a huge thing then. He got into the polo team, uh, and they won a cup. They'd never done it before. After, after Omdurman, he, he, he went back to India with a specific deal to try and win the interregimental uh, trophy, which the Fourth Hussars had never won. They duly won it. And guess who scored a hat-trick in the final? Now, if you scored a hat-trick in the final in your chosen sport, you're never going to forget it. And he went on riding. He, he went on riding. He pl he's playing polo when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer. He played pol last polo match when he was 52. Uh, at the end of his life, as you probably know, he had racehorses. He bred racehorses. Over 16 years, he had he had had 71 winners. I mean, he was a major, the major deal, because when he was a boy, his father had had the Oaks winner. The Oaks was second to Epsom Maloney, and it was a really big deal. And they lived at that stage at Banstead Manor. Now, Banstead Manor near Newmarket is actually the centre now of the what was Judmont Empire. It's where that great horse Frankel was born and now lives. But they lived at Banstead Manor, and Churchill, aged 15, rode across, rode across the heath to watch his father's Oaks winner in gallops. And I can tell you, if a boy did that now, from Harrow, I think it's important. But back then, when racing was the number one thing, it was huge. So riding was absolutely central to him. But then he had this central moment, and it was a huge moment, that if he could do this, only if he could ride was he going to survive. And the coincidence is that it's only because, only because he had that, he wrenched that shoulder, that he wasn't with a sword. And if he, if he hadn't had the revolver, when the guy did that, I mean, he's just swinging a sword round. It's very possible that we wouldn't have had him. So 
I'm just, I'm here just to leave you with the thought that you know, uh, uh, and you'll have lots of presentations, there were many, many things that went into the, the making of Winston Churchill. But horses, horses were his, his comfort in childhood, his, his challenge in youth, his transport in war, his triumph in <laughs> cup final in sport, and with those racing, his, his diversion in dotage. So, horses, of all the influences, horses, and in particular, what happened to Omnibus, was not the least of them. Thank you very much.